We're going to write the system of equations as an augmented matrix and then solve the system by writing the matrix in row echelon form. Notice we have a system of three linear equations with three unknowns, which means we'll have a three by four augmented matrix. And since the equations are in standard form, meaning we have the x, y, and z terms on the left, the constants on the right, we're ready to write this as an augmented matrix. Looking at the first equation, the first row of our matrix will be one, two, six, five. The second row will be one, negative one, two, negative three. And the third row will be one, negative four, negative two, one. Now to write this in row echelon form, we can use this form for reference, but let's go ahead and review the specifics about row echelon form. First, the non-zero element in each row called the leading entry must be one. Number two, the leading entry or one in a column is to the right of the leading entry or one in a previous row. And finally, rows with all zero elements, if any, are below rows having a non-zero element. So here are several examples of matrices that are in row echelon form. If we focus on the main diagonal highlighted here in yellow, notice that in most cases, the main diagonal only contains ones, but it is possible for the main diagonal to contain a zero if the system has either no solutions or infinite solutions. Also notice all the elements below the main diagonal or in the lower triangle must be zero. In order to transform an augmented matrix, we use a process called Gaussian elimination, which means any two rows can be interchanged, the elements of any row can be multiplied by a non-zero real number, and any row can be changed by adding or subtracting the corresponding elements with another row. So going back to our example, our first goal is to obtain zeros in these three positions. And since the first column contains ones, this won't be too difficult. I typically prefer to add rows rather than subtract them to keep track of the signs. So if we focus on obtaining a zero in this position here, if we were to use row two, notice how we could replace row three with negative one times row three plus row two. Notice how negative one times one plus one would be zero, giving us a zero in the third row column one. Let's also obtain a zero in this position here using row one and row two. And again, because both elements are one in this column, we can obtain a zero in this position if we multiply row two by negative one and add it to row one. Notice how the first row stays the same. Now we replace the second row with negative one times row two plus row one. So negative one times one is negative one plus one, that's zero. Negative one times negative one is positive one, plus two is three. Negative one times two is negative two plus six, positive four. Negative one times negative three is positive three, plus five is eight. And now for the third row, we'll have negative one times row three plus row two, so negative one times one plus one, zero. Negative one times negative four, that's four, plus negative one, that's three. Negative one times negative two, that's positive two, plus two, that's four. We have negative one times one, that's negative one, plus negative three, that's negative four. Now to have our lower triangle be zeros, we still need a zero in this position here. We don't want to lose the zero in column one, which means we'll have to use row two, because row two also has a zero in column one. And since row two has a three in column two, we could obtain a zero. We replace row three with negative one times row three plus row two. So we'll keep the first two rows the same. So we'll have negative one times zero plus zero, that's zero. Negative one times three, that's negative three, plus three, that's zero. Then we have negative one times four, that's negative four, plus four, that's also zero. And then we have negative one times negative four, that's positive four, plus eight, which is 12. Now for the last step, we need the first entry in each row to be positive one. We're gonna replace row two with one-third times row two, 
So this element would be a 1, and we'll replace row 3 with 1 twelfth times row 3, so this element is a 1. Also notice that for this augmented matrix, the main diagonal does contain a 0. We'll talk more about in just a moment. So the first row is 1, 2, 6, 5. Second row would be 0, 1 third times 3 is 1, 1 third times 4 is 4 thirds, and 1 third times 8 is 8 thirds. And then for the last row we would have 0, 0, 0, and 1 twelfth times 12 is 1. Now we're going to write this back as a system of equations. Look, you may recognize that because of this row here, the system does not have a solution. But either way, let's go ahead and write this back as a system of equations. So looking at this first row, this is telling us that 1x plus 2y plus 6z equals 5, or x plus 2y plus 6z equals 5. The second row is telling us that 0x plus 1y plus 4 thirds z equals 8 thirds, or y plus 4 thirds z equals 8 thirds. But notice how on this last row, this is telling us that 0x plus 0y plus 0z equals 1, or just 0 equals 1. So when we have an equation like this that does not contain variable terms, it's either going to be always true or always false. Well, we know zero does not equal one. Since this is false, this is telling us that our system has no solution. And because there's no solution, we can say the system of equations is inconsistent. Now, now to verify this, the graphs of these equations would be planes in space, so if we graph these three planes, they, there will not be any points that are on all three planes. Let's go ahead and verify this. Well, here's the graph of the three planes. Notice how there aren't any points that are on all three planes. This is the reason why this system has no solutions, or we have an inconsistent system. I hope you found this explanation helpful.